Hello, my name is Steve Taylor and today we're going to look at the HD2 dome with SIM injector along with one or two mounting options. First of all, in the box we have the HD2 dome and underneath that we have the various mounting options which we'll look at later. First of all, we have here the Ethernet ports shown on the left hand side and the underside of the dome on the right. Now we're going to look at how we insert the local sims into the HD2 dome. To do this we need to remove all of the screws shown here on the screen. Now you'll notice there's an indentation to the bottom of this image. This is to ensure that the cover is replaced correctly once you've inserted the sims. With the cover removed we can see we have cellular module 1 and 2 with sims A and B. Simply slide the catch along to the left to unlock the sim holders. With the SIM holders unlocked, we can lift them up, as shown here, and slide the SIMs into location. With the SIMs in place, gently close the SIM holders back down and slide them to the right to lock them back in place. Now let's have a look and see what this looks like inside the GUI of the dome. To log into the GUI we go to 192.168.50.1 and we enter the username and password which are both admin win in lower case. Here we can see that both sims have actually connected already and by clicking on the details tab we can see that cellular module 1 is using sim A with no sim in slot B and again with cellular module 2 we're using SIM A with no SIM in B. Now let's have a look at how we use the SIM injector with our HD2 dome. We have the SIM injector here on the left hand side providing PoE to our HD2 dome as you can see by the green status light on the dome. Now in the SIM injector I'm using two SIMs slot 1 and slot 3 as indicated by the green LEDs on the front of the SIM injector. Now let's log in to our dome again and see how we configure the HD2 dome to use those remote SIMs. It's worth mentioning that at the moment this feature is only available with Special Build firmware 7.11 Special Build 137. Now we're clicking on the details tab on cellular module 1 and we're going to use remote sim only. Here we enter the serial number of the sim injector. Scroll down and we'll save and apply that change. We're going to repeat this on cellular module 2. Use remote sim only. Enter the serial number. But this time we're going to force it to use sim 3 only by putting a colon and then the number 3 after the serial number. Now we'll save and apply this again. And now this takes a moment or two for the sims to be detected and then to establish a connection. So I'm just going to speed this up to save you having to wait for this to happen. If your sims do not connect automatically and you need to create APN settings, click on the advanced tab and down to remote sim management. Here we have auto land discovery. If your sim injector is not shown, you can click on the icon here and either scan for it if it's not shown, you can also enter the serial number manually. Here we have a list of remote sim servers because you might have more than one. And here we configure the sims for each sim server. You can select the sim slot you can name the slot if you desire and click on custom mobile operator settings to enter the appropriate APN username and password and if necessary enter the SIM PIN. Okay, now we're going to have a quick look at the SIM injectors GUI itself but first of all we need to know the IP address so click on the status tab, client list Obviously this is going to list all of the clients associated to the dome and I'm interested in the SIM injector and I'm going to now open a new tab 
and go to the appropriate IP address. Logging in with admin and admin again, both lowercase. The dashboard gives us an overview of our SIM injector. Clicking on the SIMS tab, we can see that we have eight slots, two of which are being used. Clients, this gives you the serial number of our HT2 dome. And PoE, this allows you to enable or disable the PoE on each port. Settings, this is basically our network settings. You can reset it back to factory default, clicking on reset. Or you can upgrade the firmware, click the upgrade firmware button or you can manually upload the firmware file yourself. Now let's have a look at one or two of our mounting options for our HD2 dome. First of all we have our HD2 dome installed here on the roof perhaps of a vehicle. We have a cable coming down to the ethernet ports. This could be a hundred meters worth of PoE capable cable. Connecting the Ethernet back to the underside of the dome, you could wall mount it using the bracket shown. Alternatively, you could mount the dome onto a pole using this adapter which screws onto the side of the Ethernet ports. With that in place, slide the pole through here and clamp it in place using the brackets and nuts supplied. Well, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your HD2 dome.